Hey everybody, this is Caitlin and you are watching Zombie Eats Books. It's a good Saturday afternoon. So this first book, Alex, is by Pierre Lemaitre. It's translated from the French by Frank Wynne and it was published in English in 2013. This is about a young woman named Alex and she is kidnapped and she's being tortured and a detective named Camille, who is the detective in the first book because this is the second book in the series, um, has to find her before time runs out. And he's kind of coming out of retirement to do that. So the first book in the series, Irene, was really great at developing Camille as a character. A lot of things happen to him that change him in pretty big ways. So I was trying to think of what it would be like to read this book by itself without having read Irene first because I think that a lot of people did that because it was published in English first. And I think it's unfortunate that it happened that way because when you miss all of that character development, you miss a lot of things in this book that they refer to throughout the book. And yeah, if you like crime series and you want to read this or you have read this and you didn't think very much of it, then I would go back to Irene and read that first and see if that might change your mind about the series as a whole. This second book isn't as creative as Irene. Irene had a really great element of metafiction to it that I really enjoyed, but I did still enjoy the twists and turns in here even if they were somewhat predictable. So I ended up giving this three out of five series. <laughs> stars, excuse me, um, that beer is getting to me I guess, um, I would recommend this as a solid crime series. So the next book scared the ever living shit out of me and that was Hex by Thomas Old Huvelt. So this is actually a Dutch author, it was originally published in 2013 and then I think it was translated into English in 2016 by Nancy Forest Flyer, best last name ever. Um, Anyway, so this is a story about a town that is cursed. There is a witch that lives in this town. She is centuries old. She has her lips and her eyelids sewn shut and she walks around in chains. And there's sort of this precarious peace that this community has found. And you know at some point in this book that peace is going to shatter. And this was such a compelling read. It's so interesting. It's such a unique plot and I absolutely loved it until the last 75 pages. And at that point, the book sort of just fell apart for me. I didn't think that it made sense the way that the author went with it. I don't think that he built up to what he ended up choosing as the ending. Um, there were so many plot holes and yeah, I. I really didn't like the ending. I was so disappointed in the ending, especially considering how much I loved the rest of it. Having said that, I did love the rest of it so much and I don't usually read horror and I was so surprised to find that I like, I might actually like this genre a lot um, that I ended up giving this four out of five stars because I think it is well worth your time if you like horror novels to read this book. And, you know, maybe you're going to be one of those people who actually likes the ending and that would be even better. So, yeah, go read this. Seriously. Next, I read a book called Such Small Hands by Andres Barba and this was translated by Lisa Dillman. So I've read translations by Lisa Dillman before and I was really excited about this. It didn't meet my expectations because I thought it was going to absolutely love it and I didn't but I did still like it. This is about an orphan girl and her relationship with all the other orphans in the orphanage that she's sent to after her parents die and there's a doll involved that plays a pretty significant part of the book. The thing that I didn't like about it was the prose. And I don't know if that's because I went into the book with different expectations, but the prose was very vague. It was very poetic. It was um, just too abstract for me. And I wanted more of a definitive storyline. I wanted a solid story, I guess, that I could sink my teeth into. And this just wasn't that. Um, it's a book that leaves a lot to the reader for interpretation and 
I generally do enjoy those types of books, but for some reason it just didn't work for me here. I ended up giving this three out of five stars because I could still recognize that this was good writing. It just maybe wasn't what I wanted to read at the time. The next book I read was The Case Against Satan by Ray Russell. So this was published in the 60s and it is a book about exorcism. And I went into this book thinking that it was gonna be really scary. It was not. So if that's what you're expecting and that's what you wanna read, then I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're looking for a really interesting psychological study, of an exorcism from the viewpoint of the priest performing it, then I would recommend this because in that way, it is fantastic, I think. I flew through this. I thought it was just absolutely fascinating. I will mention that I am not Catholic and that I didn't grow up religious in any way at all and I continue to not be religious. So things like exorcism and the devil and possession, those things don't scare me. You have to work really hard to make those things scare me. But if you grew up with those beliefs, then this might have that extra element of creepiness to it for you, which would be a bonus, I think. Um, but for me, it wasn't scary. It was just really good in a different way. So I ended up giving it four out of five stars. So last but not least, I read Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. And I'll be honest, I have been avoiding this book because I think the cover is absolutely hideous and it just looks like the kind of book that I would hate. And honestly, the rest of her books, I think, have hideous covers as well and look like books that I would hate. But I did end up really enjoying this book and it really surprised me that I enjoyed it. The plot wasn't very surprising, but I ended up really enjoying it. So this is about a group of moms and they're pretty wealthy, at least most of them are pretty wealthy and they're sending their kids to this kindergarten for the first time. And there's a murder, you don't know who's murdered, you don't know who did the murdering, the murderer, um, and really it's kind of like a backwards unraveling. And there's so much gossip and rivalry and stupid superficial shit going on that the first hundred pages of the book, I almost put it down. But then after that, the book starts to build in terms of its depth and it turns into this story about a really important issue related to women. And I can't tell you what that issue is because I think it would spoil the book, but I will say that the book is very predictable. So if you go into it, you're like at some point you're gonna figure out what's going on. Um, but I think that it's predictable actually on purpose. I think that the author actually intended it to be so predictable because she wanted to highlight how we prefer sometimes gossip to the truth because it makes us feel better about our own lives and how in the process of that we can ignore some really serious issues that are going around, going on around us that are actually pretty obvious. The one thing that I didn't like about this book was that she ends up tying everything into this neat little bow at the end, which I thought was annoying. I thought that it should have been a much more realistic ending. And I thought that the writing could have been a little bit better. This is good writing, don't get me wrong, but it didn't blow me away. So those two things made me rate this four stars out of five stars instead of five stars. But um, I would highly recommend this. I think that I'm going to end up trying out her other books as well, which is very surprising to me because these books are so damn ugly. Um, but hopefully somebody is going to help her with that eventually and I can have pretty books on my shelf or nice books on my shelf instead of this disaster. So yeah, four out of five stars, highly recommend. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know what you thought about them. Let me know if you disagree with me or agree with me on anything I said. Um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.